Okay, we're rolling. Well, today is the, uh, what is today? Today is the 17th of November, 2010. As I zoom in, there are the bluffs of Pine Bluffs. And as I look in my rear view mirror, there's a U-Haul trailer attached to my truck. Of course, we're towing the U-Haul with overdrive off. But, let me turn this around here. But the good news is that I'm going to be, I'm moving to Iowa. And today is the day and tomorrow is the day that I'm moving. And we're coming up very, very quickly here on the Nebraska border. I'm going east and I'm not looking back. So I'll check back shortly. With money, not people. I'm bluffs. But I defy you to give me an example of a corner of policy making that is more money dominated than trade policy making. Naomi Klein's work, Tom Hartman's own books have explored uh, this problem. My own columns, uh, my own books have explored this, this uh, problem as well. But a Bloomberg news story just out on the wire, I think, tells us everything we need to know about who is really running our economic policy. This is a fascinating story. Let me give you some of the background here. South Korea is, is a country that has used There's tariffs to protect to its economy, to build up its industrial economy. It's done that for decades. Uh, and its theory has been that it, it, it's World infant two. industries, it's infant technology industries can't compete with the West without some sort of uh, domestic tariff protections. This is, used to be America's economic theory for itself. Now, as the dominant economic he hegemon in the, in the world, at least right now, we're trying to get other countries to take down their tariffs. But here's what's fascinating. South Korea, at least rhetorically, is saying that it doesn't want to let in American-made automobiles because American-made automobiles do not meet South Korea's domestic safety and emission standards. Here we come, here we come. So we are in trying to push the transition. To sign this bye bye, Wyoming. Deal, trying to get it to lower its. Korean, if that means forcing them to drive down their uh, safety standards, that's good for American car manufacturers. If if we want to help American ranchers, we have to drive down food safety standards in South Korea on this on this issue, and in more in more in, in, in general in terms of other trade policies across the across the world. Maybe that should be our trade policy. I mean, I don't think it should be, but you're going to hear a kind of pro-American argument that this is good for America. I say it's the other way around. Why don't we raise our standards, right? Why don't we, when, when a country comes to us and says, we want to sell our products into your market, we should be saying, hey, listen, you got to meet this standard, this standard, and this standard. You can't have slave wages. You can't have child labor, et cetera, et cetera. And right now, we're going to South Korea and saying, you better lower your standards. What do you think about that? Where do you come down on this question of what we should be doing, what our posture should be in our trade policy? Let's go to Anthony, calling in from a place that trade impacts a lot, Seattle, Washington. Anthony, you're on the timeline. Well, it's also, it's also 